In the last lecture, we designed our courses component and we also created a course card. Now in this lecture, what we are going to do is we are going to initialize our courses state in our NGRX application with some course objects and then we are going to display those courses in the UI. So let's go to VS Code. And in here, inside this courses folder, we have created our state. So here you see we have a course state where we have this courses property. Currently, it is initialized with an empty array. Now, instead of initializing it with an empty array, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add two course object in this. Later in this course, we are going to get all the courses from an API. But for now, we are going to work with in-memory data. Now, in order to save some time, I have already created two course objects. So I am going to copy these two objects. And again, I'll share this file with you with the resource link. So you can also use this data for your practice. Let's go back to VS Code and let me add those objects inside this courses array. And let me also format the document. So here it should be a comma. Okay. Let me format the document again. All right, so now we are initializing this courses state with an array where we have two course objects. Let's save the changes. Now, what we also want to do is we want to create a feature selector. Now, in this courses state, we only have a single state. So for this, we don't need a selector. But in future, we are going to add more states to this state object. So at that time, we will anyway have to create selectors. So let's go ahead and let's do that now only. So in the state folder, I'm going to create a new folder. I mean, a new file and I'm going to call it as courses.selector.ts. Okay. Inside this, I'm going to create an object. I mean, a variable and I'm going to call it as get courses state. And here, I'm going to create a feature selector. So for that, we need to use create feature selector function and to use this create feature selector function we need to import it from ngrx store and to that we need to pass the state for which we want to create a feature selector here we want to create a feature selector for this state so here we have a state with one property courses so for that we want to create a feature selector now what we have named this state in the app component so here if i go to this store we are calling it as courses so i'm going to pass this courses to this create feature selector function and then let's also specify the type for this so this courses state it is of type courses state so here i'm going to specify the type as courses state and in order to use this courses state we also need to import it. All right, so here we created our feature selector. Now from this, we are going to create a selector. So here I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it as get courses. And to this, we are going to assign a selector. So for that, first we will have to create a selector and to create a selector, we use create selector function. And to this create selector function, First, we need to pass the feature state and then we need to specify a callback function which is going to get the current state value. So we are going to receive it as a parameter. Let's simply call it as state. And from here, we are simply going to return state.courses. That's it. Let's save the changes. Fine. Now let me close this selector file and let's also close this app state.ts file. Now we want to use this courses state in our courses component because there we want to display all the courses which we have for our application. So I'll go to courses component.ts and first of all there I'm going to create a property and I'm going to call it as courses or you can also call it as course list. But a better name will be to call it courses and this is going to be of type course array so first we are going to import this course interface here and here it is going to be 
an array of course and initially let's assign it with empty array now what we want is when this courses component is fully initialized then we want to assign this courses property of this courses component with the current value of this courses state for that first of all i am going to implement on init interface and to use this on init interface we need to import it from angular slash co and since we have imported it since we are implementing on init now we need to define ng on init method okay so inside this what we are going to do is we are going to assign this courses with the current value of this courses state now in order to read the current value of this courses state inside this component we also need to inject an instance of our store so here i'm going to specify a constructor and in that constructor let's go ahead and let's create a private property let's call it store and this is going to be of type store and here the type of this store is going to be app state and to use this app state we are going to import it from this file so here we also need to import this store let me try to type it again and let's import it from ngrx store okay so now we have an instance of this store using that what we are going to do is we are going to use the select method and here we are going to select a selector so earlier we created a selector called get courses right so here we created this get courses selector actually let me check the name okay it is get courses and we also need to export it so that we can use it in other files okay so again let me try to type it so here we have get courses and i want to import this get courses from courses.selector and not from courses.action so i want to import this and here this is going to return us an observable so what i'll do is i'll change this property from courses to courses dollar because now this is going to store an observable so here what i'll say is here we know that this this selector it is going to return us an array of courses right and it is going to return it as an observable so here this courses will be of type observable so to use this observable we also need to import it from rxjs and that observable is going to emit data of type courses array okay and since we want to initialize it with some value what i'll do is i'll say that this courses dollar it is either going to store an observable or its value should be null and i'll initialize it with null right let's save the changes and now here we will simply say this dot courses dollar equal to the observable which this select method is going to return and when that observable will emit any new data we are going to receive it for this variable i mean for this property now we are going to use this observable in the view template so now let's go to courses component dot html and what i want to do is for each course i want to render a course card so on this course card i'm going to use ng for directive and here we will say let course of courses so here we have this courses dollar observable now for this courses dollar observable we are not going to get the data immediately so what we will do is on that we are going to use a sync pipe okay so once this observable has the data it will have two course objects we want to loop over that course object and we want to render the course card so we know that inside our courses state we have two courses so for each course a course card will be rendered and if i go to course card component there we have some hard coded value so if i go to our application you will see that the course card has been rendered twice but here all these values are hard coded now what i want is instead of using the hard coded value we want to get 
the course title, course image, course description and course price from the course object which we have inside this course variable. So here we are going to receive an array once this observable has received the data. In that array we have course objects. So we want to use the details from that course object. So what I'll do is I'll wrap this within a div and on that div I'm going to use this ng for directive. Okay, and I'm going to put this card component inside that div. Okay, now inside this course card div, somehow we need to pass this course object. So for that, in the course card component, I'm going to create an input property. So for that, we need to use this input directive, I mean input decorator, and to use this input decorator, we need to import it from angular slash co. And here I'm going to call that property course, which is going to be of type course. And to use this course, we need to import it. Initially, I'll set it to null. So for that, we will also have to specify the type as either course or null. Okay, so this is an input property. And since it is an input property, what we can do is here we can bind that input property. So here I can simply say course equals this course variable. Okay, so this course is the input property of course card component, and this course is this variable which will be assigned with each element of this courses array. So for each iteration, this course variable, uh, maybe let me simply call it as CR just to avoid any confusion. And in this way, for each iteration, we are passing the course object inside this app course component using this input property. All right, now all we have to do is, let's go to the course card component. So here, let me close this selector. Here, let me save the changes in this course card component.ts file and let me close this I'll keep this open let's go to course card component.html and now all we have to do is we know that we have a property called course we are going to use that property so here in this component we have a course property and that course is of type course object so there we will have an id title description etc so here i want to display the course title and also since the initial value of course is null it can also store a null value so we should always use this optional chaining operator so that if the course is null it will not try to access the title property on that and it will avoid throwing any error in the same way we copy this and here we want to display the course image so here i'm going to do property binding on this source and in here i'll say course dot image then here inside this paragraph we want to display the description of the course so here i'll say course dot description and here i'm also going to use substring method so i only want to extract 120 characters from the description okay and after that i'll add three dots so if the length of the description is more than 120 characters, I only want to extract 120 characters from the description. And after that, I want to show three dots. Then here, I want to show the course price. So first I want to show dollar. And then I'll say course dot price. Let's save the changes and we don't need to add anything else. And with this, if we go to our application, now it should display the actual course data so for some reason it is not displaying that you see all other details are okay but the image is same so let's go to our course state okay so here i'll change it to angular.jpg okay let's save the changes let's go back and now you see the course detail are being 
rendered here so we have two courses and both the courses are rendered here you can see the title of the courses are different so it is reading the details from the courses state and we are rendering it here we have this view details button edit button and delete button but currently it is not working in the future lectures we will also make it work but as you can see now we are able to read the courses state and render it in the ui here what i'll also do is between the course card i'm also going to add some margin so let me go to course card component dot css so here we have the course card let's say margin should be top bottom zero pixel or maybe top bottom also let's put 10 pixel and left right also 10 pixel and now it looks okay all right so this is all i wanted to cover in this lecture now in our coming lectures we are also going to work on showing the details of the course editing a course and deleting a course and we are also going to add create course functionality so that also we will add and also for now we are working with in memory objects but in this course in the future lectures we are also going to create an api to create courses and save it in a database to get all courses from the database to delete courses and to update courses so we are going to create those apis in our coming lectures so there we will not work with in memory data instead we are going to fetch data and store data on a server in a database but for now we will move slowly and we will understand each concept step by step so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions from this lecture then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day